following on from the other two articles that I wrote about repressed pain, I ended up writing another article titled Can the mind cause problems when someone is carrying repressed pain? In today's world, a lot is said about physical and mental problems, and this is a far cry from how things used to be in the past. In the past, a lot used to be said about the former, whilst very little was said about the latter. Taking this into account, it could be said that this shows how far society has come. There is still work to be done, of course, but there is far more support available for people who are not in a good way than there was before. When it comes to mental problems, there are the ones that are often spoken about and those that are not. On one hand, there is anxiety, depression, panic attacks and phobias. On the other, there is insomnia, self-harm, eating disorders, obsessive behaviours and psychosis. Along with these, there are numerous other ways in which someone's ability to handle and enjoy life can be affected. What this also illustrates is that while one person who is not in a good way might be able to function and be a productive member of society, another that isn't in a good way won't be able to function and be a productive member of society. This is why it has been said that even though someone may create the impression that everything is fine, it doesn't mean that it is. When someone like this is around others, they can essentially put on an act, and then when they are by themselves, this act will disappear. The outcome of this is that what is really going on for them is likely to consume them. But even if someone is in this position, it doesn't mean that they will be able to behave in this way for long. Sooner or later, their ability to keep it together and function could come to an end. Consequently, it could seem as if they have simply changed overnight. In reality, this will be the result of what has been going on for them for a little while. What this will illustrate is how well they were able to hide what was going on for them and keep going. Now, if this person was to reach out for support, or anyone else for that matter, the area of focus is likely to be their mind. Therefore, what is going on up top will be the problem, and changing this will be the way for them to change their life. Additionally, they may be told that they need to go on medication, if only for a short period of time. When it comes to changing what is going on up top, this can primarily be seen as something that will take place by changing their thoughts and questioning what they believe, for instance. It can be as though this part of them is just playing up and it will be sorted out by them changing their software, so to speak. Ultimately, their mind will be the main issue and once this part of them has been sorted out, they will be able to handle and enjoy life again. So, by engaging in this process, it might not be long until their inner world changes and they are able to carry on with their life. Then again, this approach might not have much of an effect on them. However, even if this approach does work, why does it work? Does it work because they are simply using their frontal cortex to unknowingly repress pain that is trying to enter their conscious awareness? With this in mind, if this approach doesn't work, is it because their ability to use this part of them to repress pain is not very effective? Unless they were to step away from the mainstream and even beyond popular self-development material, they are unlikely to consider this. What this comes down to is that they are likely to live in a very mind-centered society, and in this society, it will be all about the mind. They are then going to have a mind and a physical body, and that will be about it. If their brain is mentioned, 
it could be a time when they will be told that this part of them is not functioning as it should due to a chemical imbalance. As for the pain that is trying to enter their conscious awareness, this will be pain that has been held back by their brain. Upon hearing this, they could wonder where this pain has come from, as they are unlikely to live in a society that acknowledges, let alone dismisses, that they are carrying pain. This pain will have been held in their brain and body. Although this pain won't have fully broken through, hence why they are not aware of it, they will be aware of the effect that it has on them. So whether they have rational thoughts, anxiety problems and or panic attacks, for instance, this can be a sign that their mind is under a lot of pressure and is doing what it can to allow them to keep it together. The pain that they are carrying can be the result of what they have experienced as an adult during their formative years, their birth, and when they are in their mother's womb. What took place will be in the past, that much is clear, but the pain that they experienced and repressed won't be. Yet, if repressed pain is not taken into consideration, it will naturally seem as though their mind is just playing up, and changing this part of them will be the way forward. The fact that repressed pain is largely ignored in today's world shows how effective the average person's brain is in keeping their pain out of their conscious awareness. So effective, in fact, that whole societies have been created that don't acknowledge this. So if after hearing that you get the sense that you might be carrying a lot of repressed pain, then you may need to reach out for external support so that you can start to work through this pain and this will take courage and patience and persistence and the reason it will take courage is because it won't be easy it is a simple process but it's not easy and as for patience it's not going to happen overnight and so you will need to persist because this is not a linear process it is very similar to the grieving process so you won't be going from A to B, then to C and D and so on. You can go from A to D and then back to A and then to B. But over time you will make progress. But what matters is that you reach out for the assistance that you need to gradually change your life. If you would like to find out more about the services that I offer, please go to www.oliverjrcooper.co.uk or email me at info at oliverjrcooper.co.uk and I'm looking forward to assisting you on your journey.